Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan. Well guys, the Sword of Night and Flame got nerfed, everybody in that other video is sad, and now there's no super secret weapon that'll just roll you through everything at the start of Elden Ring. Or is there? Yeah, there is, actually. And I'm gonna share this ultimate secret with you. Let's harness the power of space, gravity, and jawbones, and break the crap out of Elden Ring with a weapon that I actually like better than the Sword of Night and Flame, and get this bad boy to plus 6 in just over an hour. So here's how to make your prisoner godlike in around an hour, ish. You'll see. So I'm actually gonna break the format this time and pitch you on why this weapon is so dope, it can literally carry you through the entire game, even more than the Sword of Nine Flame. The Falling Star Beast Jaw is a massive, colossal weapon that takes a whopping 34 strength, uh, 24 if two-handing, 12 dex, and 20 int to wield. It deals both magic and regular damage, but the secret is its ability Gravity Bolt. Gravity Bolt is a long-distance area-of-effect cast that has a shortest wind-up, but then can be spammed after casting. But boy, Boy, howdy, does it have a lot of perks. Let's just line them up. It deals a ton of damage, both magic and physical, scaling best with physical. It has obscene range. It costs a pathetic 13 FP to cast. It does a whopping 33 poise damage. What this means is you'll stun most normal enemies in one or two hits, all the way from another country, stun locking certain bosses, and then knocking them down, and it hardly uses any FP at all. I kid you not when I say you can literally take this weapon to end game from the start of the game. It is that good. So yeah, the weapon rules, but the problem is you have to kill a late mid-game boss who is obscenely hard, the full and grown falling star beast to get it. So I guess we're just screwed, huh? Video over. <laughs> yeah, right. Have you seen my other guides? Let's go get this sucker from the beginning of the game. Off to it. All right, from the start, you're going to pick prisoner. However, I'll be honest, you can also pick confessor and it does cut a couple steps out here. However, if you want to purely min-max, you'll want prisoner because of the reroll later. Either one will work. You're going to need to do the normal intro stuff, getting the horse, getting summons, and heading to the beach and grabbing the gold chicken foot. Also, be sure to grab the flail in the back of the cart here as it is our bleed weapon. Yes, we're going to go do that big mama dragon kill again. However, unlike the other guides where you kind of just do it for funsies, we actually have to do it this time because we need the stats. Head down to the ruins here and use the chest at the bottom to warp into Kaled, pop out of the mine, and immediately head west. Make sure you take a little detour north into Balls Cannon to grab yourself a somber stone 6. Additionally, on the way, you are passing both the rock toss spell and the gravity staff. I would suggest grabbing that as well. Once you do that, just keep following the usual route north and then east until you reach four Gaul, where the Mama Dragon lives next to the Grace. In order to kill the Mama Dragon, we're first going to need to head into the fort, climbing up the ladder and grabbing the seal in the chest, then head down that second hole, grab the rune, jump across, head down again, grab ourselves that sword seal, and get killed by the rat. You're going to need to equip that seal so you can use the flail, then use its L2 to kill Mama Dragon. Remember to eat KFC before it dies. With a new 96,000 runes, we're going to need the following stats total as a minimum. 20 Thee Strength, so we can two-hand the weapon, 12 Dex, 20 Int, 12 Faith. But remember that sword seal gives plus 5 to Strength and Dex, so you might only need 18 to 19 strength right now to two-hand the weapon. I would suggest putting the remaining points into mind at this stage. Just trust me on this, you're gonna need some FP. Okay, now we've got our stats, we're gonna need an incantation, a seal, and an amulet, which means it's time for a war crime. To get our seal, we're going to need to do the first part of D's quest, as he'll give the beast class seal, and it has low requirements. To do this, we're going to need to pick up some death root. This can be found either in the death tough catacombs, or you can kill a mariner here in these two locations on the map. Either way, you're gonna need to head to this grace, but before before we do that, we're going to do a really bad thing. When you go to this grace, you'll hear Alexander the Warrior Pot calling for help. You're going to head up the cliff, free him, and then kill him. Look, I know it's monstrous, but hear me out. Alexander drops a talisman that increases your weapon skill damage by 10%, which is really, really good. Now, if you finish his quest, you'll get the Shard of Alexander instead, which busts it by 15%, but you get that really, really late in the game, and I don't think it's worth waiting for. I think the 10% now is better, as it will do more for you over the course of the game. This is still technically your choice, but I would highly recommend recommend it. No regrets. Okay, I do have a few regrets, but 10% damage definitely helps soften the pain. Now you're gonna need to either go into Death Touch Catacombs and kill the boss, or head down and kill the Mariner in the village. The choice is up to you. Either way, you're gonna get some Death Root. Warp back to the round table and show the Death Root to D, and then he will tell you to head to a church, which has a warp outside the back. Head over there, making sure you grab all the seeds and tears along the way, because you'll need them, and warp to the new area. Head inside the building and give the root to the Beastman to get our seal. Now, if you pitch Confessor, you obviously don't have to do all I just said, because you already have a seal. Now we're going to need the incantation that we're going to use. Head south to the Weeping Peninsula and then off to the side in the woods here. There will be a beetle on the ground that will teleport around if he sees you. Don't worry, he doesn't go very far. So just find a way to reach him and hit him to get Poison Mist incantation by killing him. This is why we needed 12 faith and now we're almost ready to go on our quest. Yeah, I know, lots of prep. 
The Falling Star Beast is way up in Mount Gelmir, which is up in the Atlas Plateau. So we're gonna need the other half of the disc to get there. From the church D told you to go to, head south and make sure you pop by Mistwood because we're gonna do the first part of Blade's quest real fast. Once you get to Fort Hot, you can either fight the guys or just head up and grab the seal, whichever you prefer. From here, warp back to the Church of Ella and talk to the merchant about Blade to get Finger Snap. Head back to Mistwood and Snap near the north side to talk to Blade. Once you've exhausted his dialogue, you're gonna head down to the Ever Jail that's here. Warp inside, make sure you summon Blade and then kill the guy. After you kill the boss, talk to Blade and fully exhaust his dialogue. We're doing this for two reasons. He gives a somber zone too, and he'll unlock an important talisman that we're gonna need for purchase, so make sure you do not skip this part. Alright, that was a lot of prep. Let's go kill a space monster. This is a long journey. Bring some snacks. You're gonna head up to Learning of the Lakes and grab the Academy Key, which is here on the map, and then you're going to use it on the other location on the map, on the seal, to enter the Academy. Once you're here, I actually recommend running past the North Seal to grab a seed, and then head back to that northbound seal and use it to warp to the top part of Lernia. Once there, keep heading north and a little bit to the east until you reach the Great Lift. Use your two discs to climb the lift, and we are now on the Atlas Plateau. I told you this journey was going to be long. Hope you packed some snacks. Keep heading north until you reach the Broken Bridge. Use the teleport to go across it. Once there, head back around under the bridge and continue to the west, following the trail until you cross a suspension bridge and find a grace, which is next to the mountain. On the side of the mountain, there is a ladder. We're going to need to head over to that, climb up it, touch the grace, then head to the right, hopping across the canyon behind Pumpkinhead, avoiding the big nasty monster, and then climbing up the next ladder. From there, climb up the next ladder. Yes, there's a lot of ladders that will then get you to the merchant. Keep climbing up the ladder behind him. This is the last one for now, I promise. Pop on torrent, head across the nearby suspension bridge, and hit the grace. Finally, we made it to where the boss is. Here, make sure you upgrade all of your flasks with the stuff you've been gathering and put them all on FP flask. You're gonna need it. Also, make sure you have poison mist equipped as well as your seal. Are you ready? Let's go cheese this big bastard. So in my playthrough, this is where the hour mark hit, but the next part's gonna take like 20 minutes, so go queue up some YouTube. Use torrent and hop up using the vent, but make sure you land as far to the right as possible. The trick is that Falling Star Beast is a field boss, which means as long as he isn't aggroed to you, he will not respond to certain abilities. So what you need to do is the second you land, pop off torrent and immediately crouch and take a big, long circle around him until you get behind him. Once you do, target him, and then you're going to cast Poison Mist. Now, for whatever reason, this doesn't aggro him, and note that Poison Mist casts don't stack, so you're going to want to cast it, wait for it to dissipate, and then cast again. Once you afflicted him poison, i.e. you'll see numbers going down, you just sit and wait. It'll do around 1400 points of damage, and then you'll have to reapply the poison. So yeah, like I said, this takes a while, about 20 minutes, so put on a YouTube video or something. However, if you are patient and have enough FP pots, you will bring this bad boy down, not only earning the Falling Star Beast jaw, but also a somber some sticks and a bunch of runes. Congrats, you have a broken weapon insanely early. Let's go upgrade it and get our next talisman. You're gonna wanna head to the giant smith who is here in Lernia. Once you get to him, make sure you keep talking to him until he asks about Blade and you fully exhaust his dialogue. This will open a talisman in his shop we want, the Carrion Filigreed Crest. This talisman decreases the FP cost of our ability by 25%, which is about 3 to 4 FP, which makes it absurdly cheap and even more spammable. This, the Pot Shard, and the Source Seal are the core three you're gonna be using for probably most of the game as they all synergize extremely well. Now that you have that, you're gonna upgrade your enormous drawbone to plus six with those sweet stones you have. You may not have enough runes on you at the moment, so make sure you eat all the rune stones that you've picked up. You can also go farm cultists or the boulder by the beast lord should you need some extra. And that's it. Congrats, you now have a plus six mid to end game weapon with an absurdly busted ability that not only costs less FP, but does more damage, and you're probably not even an hour or two in the game. So what do we level up on our guy? Well, basically you're going to be two-handing this mother for 99% of the game because it takes way too much strength to offhand, and I see no real reason to do that unless I guess you really want a shield. But regardless, getting your strength to 34 is good advice, but not necessary. What you really should do is get your endurance up fast so you don't fat roll. I got my base to around 25, and then got my vigor to 20, and then 40. From then on, you're just going to want to put points in strength or dex based on which one makes the number go higher. Seriously, that's the entire strat. The L2 scales absurdly well with strength and dex, but scales like trash with int. So don't put anything in int beyond the 20 you need to use it. So this is going to be the shortest how-to in the history of this channel because because all you do is spam L2. The entire game. Spam, spam, spam. You are, of course, welcome to attack if you want to, as long as you get the timings right, but the L2 is still nuts. You're gonna basically use it the entire game. Your main goal is to just keep distance between you and enemies, and something you're going to need to learn is the maximum distance that this L2's cast is, so you're not wasting it trying to hit enemies that are too far away. But beyond that, that's honestly it. I uh, wore as heavy armor as I could, just in case, but basically you're just gonna go stand in another zip code and spam hitting them with gravity rocks. With bosses, you'll knock them over with this, which will let you land a free crit, which is also just crazy good. So, we have an absurd weapon, and it's at plus six. We have three absolutely obscene amulets that have crazy synergy, and we're murdering enemies with gravity rocks from another country. Where do we go from here? Um...
Not really too much, actually. The only thing I'd really recommend is picking up the strength of the dex hats that you can get along the way. These grab those points to those stats, which will increase your damage. But aside from that, you can just wear whatever you want and kill at range. Unlike the Sword of Night and Flame, which could fall off a bit entering the mid-game, even pre-nerf, this one is good the entire game, both because of its crazy scaling, its high range, and its obscene poise damage. Getting this weapon early makes the rest of the game pretty much cake. Now you can establish dominance over Elden Ring with the jaw of a space alien rock monster that you poison to death, just as Miyazaki intended. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Have you been rocking this weapon? It is just so ridiculous. But either way you slice it, I hope that you enjoyed this guide. Give it a shot and have yourself a fantastic day playing Elden Ring.